Hey, what's up guys? It's Russ. Um, for uh, the guys on Workshop Addict who've been following this build and for all like uh, six of my followers on YouTube, um, you may know that I've been working for the last couple of months on a uh, Rubo style workbench. Uh, it's made completely of construction grade lumber. Um, I tried to do it on a budget for everything except the hardware on the, uh, on the face vise, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, but after a lot of hours um, and uh, quite a few swear words at various times, um, it's done. Um, at least to the point where the only thing left I had to do is some light sanding and a few coats of armor seal. So before I got into using it and getting it all junked up with, uh, with pieces I'm working on or glue or, or, or whatever else I'm, I'm planning to do to it in the future, I thought now would be a good time to take you guys on a little tour, um, show you how I put it together, uh, some of the features, and um, see if you all have any questions in case any of you guys are crazy enough to, you know, blow, blow two months of your lives building one of these, uh, building one of these monstrosities. Um, but uh, I'll, uh, I'll take you on a little tour. All right, the first thing I want to put, uh, point out is the construction of the bench. It's all, with the exception of the chops for the vices and the wellboard, construction grade uh, 2x4s. Now, I selected them very carefully out of the bin. I, I know, as they say in Texas, you can't polish a turd or you put ice cream on top of shit, you still got shit. Um, but after running them through the joiner and the planer and trying to pick the boards that were pretty much clean, I mean, I'm sure you see a lot of knots, um, but these are all tight knots, uh, no loose ones. Um, and I was able to pick mostly uh, dry and, and, and pretty true, uh, tried and true uh, two by fours out, out of what was available. The legs are tripled up, laminated two by fours, three of them. Um, and the stretchers are doubled up, as are the bearer boards um, and the short stretchers. Uh, the joinery for the short stretchers into the legs is mortise and tenon. The long stretchers get a stub tenon into a mortise and then a lag bolt um, to, to draw it all tight and keep it from, uh, try and keep it from racking. The uh, bearer boards are fastened into the legs with tenons. And uh, I'll, I'll show you a close up of, of the joinery from the, uh, from the legs to the top. All right, this bench has two vices on it. Um, the first one uh, that I wanna show you and save the big one for last is the uh, end vise, which is the hardware is, is a gras vise that's marketed as a uh, as a front vise, um, but I thought it would do just as fine as a, as an end vise, um, and and so far I'm pretty pleased with it. Now I'm sure everybody's familiar with the operation of an end vise. Um, you can either use it as a traditional clamping point um, for a workpiece, you know, here. Um, or you have this series of dog holes, three quarter inch dog holes that travel down the bench and you can use the dogs to clamp a workpiece. You just put a dog in the front chop of the vise, tighten her down between the two dogs and it's not going anywhere. And you can work it with whatever you want to work it with. And if you're going to, you're going to work, work it with a plane, you can work the end grain. Uh, you can basically use it for, for whatever operation you need to use it for, um, as well as, uh, you know, I have it set up so that my metal working vise will drop in here and I can, I can uh, do anything that needs to be done on there. Um, and it, boy, there's, there's all sorts of choices for, for bench dogs now. Uh, these Soberg's ones are, are really nice. Just a little piece of wire keeps them in there tight. Um, but the, uh, the other ones I like, and here in the wellboard I, I drilled some holes, are these, these Craig ones right here. And they have this little non-slip rubber tip on them. Um, and and that's, that, that seems to be nice. You can put a workpiece on there and it doesn't really move. It gives you a nice flat end stop here. And if you're working with three quarter inch thick uh, material, you have plenty of clearance over uh, the top of this rubber pad, which you can actually remove the rubber pad as well if you want even more clearance. But um, if you're working three quarter inch thick material, it's, it's plenty uh, thin enough that your plane will slide right over the top of it. The uh, chops on the end vise 
our hard maple. Um, this one is bread boarded to the end of the bench. Um, and this one is uh, seven inches, uh, seven inches tall, two inches thick um, for, for the front chop. Um, and that's the, uh, that's the invoice. As I mentioned, this is a split top Roubaix design. Um, the top is split into two sections and in the center I put a well board. Um, and that well board is a great place to collect sawdust and uh, you know other junk uh, that you're working on. But I made it the right depth so that uh, work pieces, so that uh, my, my block planes, my sanding blocks, um, you know, small planes, my mallet, uh, and uh, other things that I use quite frequently will sit down in the middle and the work piece will still pass over, over top of them. Um, it keeps everything in reach. I don't feel like I'm reaching all the way back if I put the tool tray on the back. Um, I really sort of like that, that part of the split top bench design. And so far, I, I, I think I'm going to like it. Um, I haven't spent hours and hours working on it yet. Um, but having these tools that used to clutter up my bench that I use all the time, and therefore they don't ever live in a drawer, they're always sitting on top of the bench, I'm hoping it's going to declutter my other, my other workspace um, and keep these things closer at hand where I can't lose them or drop them on the floor or get them dinged up or, or, or all the other stuff that, that I do to them when I'm out here drinking beer and, and, and trying to work at the same time. The coolest feature of this build is the um, front vise. A very large 33 inch wide Moxon style twin screw front vise. Um, the hardware is by Hovarder Custom Vise. Um, if you haven't checked them out, you owe it to yourself to check them out. This was the one thing on this bench that I, I basically built this bench around this vise. I knew I wanted a Moxon style vise to where I would have a full 24 inches of clamping capacity between here um, and uh, be able to work on wide panels if I ever want to dovetail together a, a, a toy box or something like that if, if, in case my insanity um, gets worse. But it gives you very large clamping capacity for working end grain. It opens to a full 11 and 7 eighths inch capacity this way um, and 33 inches this way means I can exert a lot of clamping pressure when I'm working um, the side of a board or a long work piece. Um, it's just a lot of, of uh, pressure over, over a lot of uh, square inches. Uh, seven inches from the top of the bench uh, to the bottom of the back chop. Um, and same thing on the front chop. The front chop is a full two inches thick. Um, the back chop is an inch and three quarters thick. Um, and it's, I call it a Moxon style vise, although as you can see, there's no threads on these screws. These are just shafts. And this is the really neat thing about Hovarder's uh, vise hardware, is the vise is released and free to slide. So it's better than a quick release. You don't have to flip a switch or hold up on something in order to release the vise. It just slides by itself as long as it's unlocked. But as soon as you put a work piece in and turn one of the handles, watch the other handle, ooh, magic, it's locked. And it's not coming out until these shafts rotate back into the unlocked position and then it's free to slide again. The thing that I didn't like about the traditional Moxon style vise was having to pull the work piece in turn this one and then reach over and turn this one it just seemed like an extra step and you know time is precious in here um, I don't get to spend a lot of time in here um, and uh, it, it just seemed like a, a bigger hassle having to turn two screws um, more potential for racking and things like that but Hovarder you get the benefit of a twin screw device but you only have to turn one handle and I keep reaching for the right handle but it works the same <laughs> works the same if you turn left handle. You turn either handle and they both turn. And that's as much clamping force as you're going to need is about a quarter turn right there. And I can make the whole bench rock, um, but that thing is, that thing is not going to move. It will tilt that way, but it would in any vice, regardless of clamping pressure. But if I up it even more, really 
torque on the vise, I would stop that one from moving that way as well. When you're clamping something long ways, that puppy is just not, it's just not going to move. Great, great bit of hardware. So underneath the vise, on each one of these shafts, there's this cam mechanism. And you can see up here, there's a wedge right there. And when you turn the handle, that wedge gets driven in and out. Now, the way the shafts operate together is through this linkage bar. And it's hooked up to this cam and it moves this linkage bar so that a turn of either one of the clamp shafts We'll turn the other one the same amount. Very, very cool. Hovarter Custom Vice. H-O-V-A-R-T-E-R. -E Hovarter Custom Vice. Check so it that's out. it, guys. Um, that's the that's the new bench. Uh, I'll probably put up a couple of pictures once I get some armor. See, see, look at that dust already. Get off my bench, you son of a... I'll talk to you all later. Um, if anybody has any questions, feel free to post them. Um, if you're thinking about doing this,